Salutations, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, which we're playing not as Canada, but the nation below it. So, uh, last time, we somehow, well, not really somehow, but we managed to pass basic civil rights legislation, which got us, got us a little bit more daily political power and stability, but now we're doing injustice anywhere as a threat to justice everywhere. And was it last episode? Or maybe the, an episode b f before the last one, where we even had the Indonesian Civil War, and we helped them out and did really, really well there. Now, I'm hoping that someday the Philippines falls apart. In TNO, not in real life, but in TNO. Uh, ooh, Aquino. Aquino? And uh, now we can help them rise up against, or help the Filipinos rise up against Japanese oppression. But that's just me. Good liquid reserves. One. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Cool. We're still running out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Some. Six some. Okay, that's fine with me. Uh, so, yeah. We've just finished this focus, and we could do this. We're gonna wait. Let's see, influence. Oh, sure, why not? Ten percent, not bad. Let's make this a little bit more. Just, just, just a tiny bit more, because we have over a thousand political parts. I'm feeling pretty good. Work with Republicans. Work with Republicans and passing this bill, getting some support from them in the Senate. Uh, what bill are we talking about? Garner some far right support. The roads. Oh, look at all these things that have opened up now. So, we've got a couple comments to go through, and we could keep doing this for now. We could do the with charity for all, but we're going to wait. Because I really want to focus on trying to get back Hawaii and helping everyone else. So we'll do Brothers in Arms first. The U.S., like any true son of liberty, does not stand alone in bringing freedom and prosperity to the world. Besides the many exiled governments operating in D.C. and Ottawa, we have allies in both the Atlantic and Pacific, not to mention our friends in Canada and our, most, and our loyal many, uh, our strategic partners in the Americas. However, our many friends and allies struggle greatly with equipment and manpower needs as they were heavily reliant on designs, technology, and productive capabilities. Cap cap Capacity from a now fallen European continent. If we are, if they are to work in concert with the mighty U.S. armed forces as anything more than cannon fodder, we must help them stay at our level in terms of equipment and training. Brothers in arms, and now we can talk with hardline supporters, which is something we really, really, really need to do. Gain support from unions, and oh wait, talk with them. Oh, maybe not do that one. No, no, it wasn't that one. <laughs> it wasn't with that one. We need East Southern fears. We go a little more united, and RFK will be seen as a less liberal candidate, which is exactly what we need to be doing. Campaign for civil rights. Campaign with Wallace. Oh. That'd be really cool. Chat with Goldwater. Actually, let's do that one. Ooh, yeah. Mm, the Republican Democrat Party grows a little more unified. You know, I'm just, for now, we're just going to ease Southern fears. Just because, unfortunately... Ooh, they run a respectable campaign. Good for them. Uh, unfortunately, RFK is not my real guy that I want here. Oh, look, we have 18 Republican senators. 27 are Democrat. Uh, the National Progressive Party is working together really well. 40 center? No. Oh, so the Republicans and Democrats kind of swapped some popularity. So that's interesting. So, oh, God, we have the Senate confirmation of Thurgood Marshall as well. 18, 16 out of 18. So that's legislation. 8 out of 27. All 40 of our party Social Democrat senators support our bill. So really, we have 48. 48 plus 16 is 64. 64 and 3. 67. So, sins of the father. Oh. Honestly, how much do we need? Do we need... Oh, how much do we need, actually, for justice? Because this was changed early on in the 20th century for America, I'm pretty sure. For the confirmation, or the Senate confirmation of the U.S. justice. I thought it was, like, two-thirds of, like, 66 senators. So that's actually 43 plus 24, 67. So we might already have enough. If he doesn't get in, so be I don't really care. Since the father, expose the... Foibles of Washington from a young age. Robert Kennedy came to realize early in life that America is a land of contradictions. Many of his father's fellow senators professed to value freedom and liberty above all, while simultaneously denying the fundamental rights of a great many of their own citizens for no other reason than the color of their skin. The Civil Rights Act is a step in the right direction to the right the wrongs of his forebears, but compared to the many injustices when plaguing America, it seems but a vast a drop in a vast, vast basin. Sitting in the Oval Office, nursing a tumbler of scotch, the president wonders why he doesn't feel any sense of accomplishment. He changed the lives of millions, and yet it felt like he'd hardly done anything at all. So many terrible things were still happening across America. School segregation, redlining, FBI harassment. It seemed like the less kept going on and on, an unassailable mountain of obstacles. Kennedy felt resu resoluteness rising in him, buoying up him, buoying him up even as he felt like sinking. He was a president now, and he had power. The power to do what was right. I can't rest, he thought, as he drowned or down the scotch until I get it all done, even if it kills me. Whew, oh man. The wicked shall have no rest. You know... There's a time and place for everything, and you want to get some stuff done, but you might not want to go push as hard as you possibly can, especially 
if you have to get reelected later on, but we're, let's be real, we're not going to get him reelected. Probably not. No, 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 no. We want Mr. Buckeye. There you go. That's what I thought. Thur Justice Thurgood Marshall is confirmed. A man who wants to declare that you do what you think is right and let the law catch up will now sit on the most important judicial institution in the U.S. In a decisive vote in the Senate today, Thurgood Marshall was confirmed as the newest Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Marshall will be the first African American to serve on the court, and his confirmation is undoubtedly a victory of the Civil Rights Movement, which he himself has worked tirelessly to advance. During his confirmation hearing, a number of conservative senators rallied against judicial activism and made a variety of statements that many commentators have called a little better than do dog whistles. Some even asked whether or not Marshall had ties to American Bolsheviks. The strategy failed, however. At a press conference today, just as Marshall stated his gratitude to the Senate and to the people of America before posing for pictures with his two sons and his wife, the civil rights activist Cecilia Suyat Marshall. This is a truly historic moment for the nation, representing the triumph of justice over institutional racism. Thurgood Marshall will be appointed as the first African American justice. Prep event, prep event, prep event, and prep event. Cool, we're probably going to get a prep event. Bulls updated, cool. Just going on the horse race. So the MVP is going to win really kind of handily here, it looks like. Um, You know what, I'm going to stop campaigning. Let's stop campaigning because it, it really doesn't matter. Because I don't... Actually, you know what? I could do that. Hmm. Oh, we need money in our reserves to do all this stuff. A more balanced court. Where previous administrations have attempted to enforce their radical injustice on the nation through con controversial Supreme Court appointments, our administration chooses to put the law before our ambitions. The most recent appointees to the court have expressed their intent to uphold the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, vowing to listen to reason and to make their judgments in a balanced and unbiased way. The de, -de radicalization of the courts has been met with approval from the vast majority of the American population. While the French movements who benefited from the previous appointments may cry foul, those who are committed to the continuing success of American democracy have expressed renewed faith in the government, confident that we can restore fairness and true justice to the judicial branch. We will uphold the Founding Fathers' ideals. Or ideals. Okay, cool. Uh, chat with Goldwater. Yeah, I, mm, I kind of want to do that, but... Hmm. You know what? We'll chat with Goldwater. Just because I want the Republican Democrat Party to be more unified. And we'll be seen as less liberal. So that's really good. And burning circuses. All across America, as the sun sinks below the horizon and the stars come out, families gather in their living rooms, sit in front of the television sets, and switch the dial, bringing the images of President Kennedy and Senator Goldwater into tens of millions of homes. Plenty immediately switch to the Gilligan's Island or Bonanza, but those who shovel peas and mashed potatoes into their faces and settle in to watch the debate. What they don't see is how carefully scripted and choreographed the entire charade is. Anyone who close to the two men is well aware of the utter hatred and contempt in which they hold for each other, but both Goldwater and the President agreed to debate in order to use a considerable media presence to advance their own positions. After all, there's little that appeals more to the public than politicians looking like they're working together for the public good rather than stabbing each other in the back. Perhaps some of the more diehard supporters won't like the appearance of concord between the two opposing forces, but many more welcome detente in Washington. <clears throat> So while the two chat amiably about government programs and local politics, Americans nationwide are fed the carefully designed illusion of bipartisan unity as a side to their TV dinners. Thankfully, they don't see, see the look of vitriol that passes between the two men as the camera shut off. The people are sheep, the TV's a shepherd. Oh, you know what? We said early on the Republicans and Democrats were the same, were the uh, coin... Oh, I can't even say it right now. Oh, two sides of the same coin, Republicans and Democrats. Well, throw in the center PPP now, too. Woo! We got a three-faced coin. That's kind of weird. All working together? What? At least the far right and the far left kind of don't want to work with each other. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. When I'm recording this, I'm going like, I'm going a little mental right now, I suppose. I don't know. Time for some coffee. Brothers in arms. Down under? I like, I like Australia. Fire up the people. I don't want to do that because it's limited. Let's get build up more military factories. Feed the beast. War needs men. It consumes them with a great greed and hunger for more. It is a sad reality of conflict. It is likely that in any prolonged conflict we would be forced to instate the draft anyway, and if we are to realize the new American dream of freeing the world from tyranny, at least the Japanese tyranny, conflict is inevitable. All Americans will have to take part in making this dream a reality, and dancing around it only puts our precious liberty and our aspirations further at risk. The draft must be reinstated, and better now that we are relative, at relative peace so that people get used to it, than when our country is already bleeding and struggling in the war. Let us set up a task force with the Pentagon and Census Department to determine our drafting capabilities and begin contra contracting factories to produce kits for a greatly expanded military machine. With some luck, a bit of domestic discontent now will mean a quicker and relatively painless war in the future, as our superior numbers and technology overwhelm our foes with shock and awe. Better protests now than the draft riots when the Japanese are shelling Golden Gate. Cool. So a couple comments. Uh, after we read Brother in Arms. The office of the president could be a thankless job, but there were still some simple tasks to be found here and there. For example, playing host. 
President beckoned the leaders of the OFN to his side in the Oval Office as they poised for a group photo, smiling before the flash and clatter of the cameras. It was a family photo of the free world, from Canada to Central America to Australia and New Zealand. All smiles and merriment before the process or for, before the press were shooed out of the room for the real work to begin. Often the president would have to serve as a mediator. President, the president found himself mentioning or motioning for the Canadian Prime Minister to stop talking over his Central American counterpart, so that his complaints could get a fair, fair hearing. The leader of the free world would ensure that the littlest among them was still quite equal. But the easiest job president found was that of salesmen. Tens of millions of dollars in technical assistance for Latin American agriculture, hundreds of millions of dollars for Canadian industry, or for the never-ending reinforcement of the fortress Australia and the rock of New Zealand. The precise sums pres the president realized never really mattered. It was a time of year as important to OFN members as Christmas was to children. Jo America would be generous to its OFN family, president 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 kennedy thought for they could either stand together or they would die alone uncle sam has a present for you money 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 cool so yeah so someone said in the comments that if i got back to hawaii first we did this path first as well as really campaigned hard we could have potentially been able to do march straight forward and just get legislation passed that would actually would have been really really cool if we could do that really really cool and someone also said in the second half of the campaign for civil rights the chance to get assassinated is quite a bit higher. Higher, higher, higher. But it's actually really cool if you can get it done and not die. <laughs> so, like I said in, earlier in this campaign, my goal is not really to play a super successful RFK because I want the guy after in 68 to get elected. So, I'll, I'm seeing this campaign, this part of the campaign, as sort of a precursor to when I actually play RFKs for real and do my best to not get him assassinated. So, that would be the best that I can do. So he's a more liberal candidate. Ooh, you know what? Mm. I don't want him to get more support. Campaign with Wallace. I don't want to have the NPP do that much better, though. So, goes more divided. Campaign for civil rights? No. No, 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 no. I don't mind doing the fight against poverty, though. So, I think since we took both the Barry Goldwater decision, as well as the East Southern Fears decision, I think we are allowed maybe, maybe, at least one of these because I want to help the academic base and I do want to help out the fight against poverty especially poverty so the Democrat and Republicans will look better we'll see in a slightly more liberal I think it'll be okay if we do that since I'm not t touching any more you know civil rights legislation and actually there's another comment from yesterday or the last video saying that if I go down this path we can help southern e southern fears and get more of the more radical elements better with us in terms of relationship. Man, words are hard, my friends. I am sorry. I cannot speak right now. Uh, let's go ahead and grab 66. Let's grab some maintenance companies. We can. Let's grab that one. So, yeah. If you do the, you know, healthcare stuff and social security and stuff, you can get the Southerners a little bit more on board. So, Romania sides with Italy. Cool. And we're going to be feeding the beast. Uh, cogs in the machine. Eh, it's not bad. Let's get some more military factors, I guess. Our Japanese... Our Japanese... Our military industry is performing... Uh, insufficiently. The Japanese control upon the industrial strength and resources of an entire continent and the full force of American industrial might must be put to use against them. While the prepar our preparations for the draft ensured an uptick in infantry equipment production, we still need to beat the Japs in the air and the sea, not to mention to ensure our brave GIs have the support they need of tanks, artillery, and vehicles. Over the past few weeks, a number of politicians and generals have approached our administration with ideas of a vast aid package for the military industrial complex, with the government funding now the construction of new arms plants in return for the increased control over production. While they're considerably paid off with promises of cushy board positions and the retirement from office. That doesn't mean they are wrong. Let us draw up a bill to support our proud American weapons companies, bringing prosperity to our lands by putting weapons in their hands. Or in our hands. That'd be good. Uh, abdicates. Tunu Abdul Rahman becomes Prime Minister. Cool. Well, good luck. And it's a crap and gentlemen. Nope. 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 Hey, look at that. Annual deficit. Minus 15 billion. Exactly. That's nice. Rush militarization. Uh, be it from the center or the far right, the extremist hang hanger-ons we prefer to ignore. Every NP stands united in their determina determination to reclaim our stolen lands from the Japanese aggressor and make our nation a great power once more. President Kennedy has thus embarked on a new series of initiatives to empower our military might and promote jingoism on the home front. By obtaining the material ca capacity and public support for unleashing total annihilation upon our common enemy, we may convince them to see reason and return what's rightfully ours. No polls updated. Great. Hmm. Oh. Coffee's great. But Nagasaki Accord signed. Look at that, bringing peace to Vietnam, fresh air at last. Let's go and further ease southern fears. That'd be great. And we're slowly losing a lot of political power, actually. So we're 50% uh, influence in the OFN. Nice. How's this looking? 
Cool. Cool. And, well, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start slashing this a little bit more. I could slash this, but we still need as much political power as possible, so. Eventually. Minus 21 billion. Just because I'm, like I said before, we've got to keep an eye on uh, the future. And by the future, what I'm talking or referring to is... Ooh, look at that. We can go down here, too. And Guantanamo Bay. Nice. Uh, the oil crisis that's going to happen eventually. So. And there's definitely one focus. Oh, look at that. So we can help out Angola. We might as well. We'll make this a truly great African state. But, uh... Oh, yeah, we can help these guys out, too. I forgot about this. Oh, wow. Infrastructure zero. Yeah. There's one focus. I don't remember exactly which one it is. That will help destroy a bunch of support for RFK. So... And we got... It's basically the co-intel pro. Because I want to get the Republicans and Democrats re-elected in 68. I want to get at least below 100, 100 billion in terms of national debt. I really, really want to get that done. For this campaign, at least. I kind of wish you could see, like, if there was be, like, a number, how how liberal, you know, you could see RFK is. I wish we could see that. I mean, it doesn't make any sense why we can, but Mafia Money, Stonewall Gin. Like all organized crime establishments, the anonymous room in Queens had the smell of cash and cigarettes and too many secrets whispered into a wailing drywall, or waiting drywall. The men within paced about and spoke at length on the subjects one would expect. A laundering here, a fiefdom issue there, the latest quotas from the bosses. Everyone knew enough to make sure that they didn't leave the wrong words hanging in the air for the wrong ears. Shibboleths sprouted in the smoky mists. The Genovese a branch of the mafia hadn't clung, hadn't clung to the yellowed halls of power on the east coast by playing stupid. They certainly weren't going to start now. The struggle at present wasn't one of power but of its old friend, money. The New York joints had been busted up for a long while and for a time the patrons had settled for what they could get. Depression years and the chaos of the 50s had a way of killing any uptown pretensions. But now that America was recovering, the old middle class patrons were beginning to filter out and even ones at the Cosa Nostra uh, deemed distasteful were moving in to take their place. The pimps were losing control of the situation on home turf. Something had to be done. Antony, Joe, and Mock, not the real names, fiddled with the map of the South Avenue on the table. A new joint, free of the putrid smell of the old town, would jazz up the revenues and act as a movement point for money, guns, and information. Old trades, new revenue, or new venue, easy money. But who would frequent it? It wasn't exactly Broadway. Anthony smiled. He, his next words would change history even if he didn't actually know it yet. We open up to the queers. <laughs> oh, man. Well, <clears throat> whatever makes you money, right? Minus 21 billion. Not bad. Pump the gas. Oh, let's pump it. Rosie the Rifle Woman. You know what? Since we still got support, we, should, we probably still do Rosie the Rifle Woman, so. Eyes on the ports. That's not bad. Port Alcatraz. Oh, yeah. Requires all the following. Nothing can stop us now. Let's do cogs in the machine. The government has extensive powers over private industries in the case of national emergencies. With a bit of creative interpretation with these laws, we can encourage the heavy industries to optimize the production lines for potential wartime needs. Like a scout, an American should always be prepared. Always. A little bit of lag. Hold on. And there we go. Actually, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Five going at the same time. Not bad. You know, even though we're building up a nuclear reactor, can we do anything with that? Like, oh, they're on a good campaign. Good for them. Uh, you know what? Since we're here, we might as well just do it in... Just for funsies. Let's go to the Deep South, because we can. Emperor Baldai abdicates Communist Party Swift into power. Now with a bang, but with a whimper. Oh, boy. Republic of China. Ooh. Actually, can we get involved? Can we help them out? Ooh. Let's see. We're almost done with their air doctrine. Let's go and do variable attack patterns. Air attack. Oh, look. 10% more air attack. Let's see. What's going on over here? So, do we like these guys? Not too much. They're fascists. So, KMT Gal Cabinet versus these guys who are ultra nationalists. Okay, never mind. I don't want to help either one out. They're both garbage compared to us. The Defang Tiger. Huh. State of Education Modernized. That's good. Slave of the Samurai. That's not good. Western Insurrection. Oh, wow. I really have to play as China someday. I really, really have to. Push Japan. Do you have it? Oh. The King of the Southwest. The Great War of National Salvation. That's kind of cool. Yeah, China seems super interesting. Oh, wow. You got any more down here? We have work to do. Nice. Can I eat Southern Fears yet? Yes, I can. I don't know how much we should do this, but... You know what? We're going to do this one more time. And then I'm going to work... 
fight for workers, maybe. As well as schools. We'll try that one. Cogs in the machine, great. Let's get some legislation passed with Rosie the uh, Riflewoman. We're facing down one of the world's largest empires. The Japanese control over a billion people in their sphere, and they could field a massive army were war to break out. Though we are a large nation in our own right, we struggle to find enough manpower to meet our defensive needs. Perhaps it's time to think outside the box and consider whether manpower is really what we need. President Kennedy will introduce the Women's Occupational Military Equality Normalization Act in Congress. The WOM, the Woman Act. Oh, in Congress. This act will open up combat roles to women for the first time in history. While some could see this as an erosion of traditional gender roles, this bill has the potential to unite warhawks and progressives to create a grander and more egalitarian fighting force. Well, let's just not get everyone killed. So the polls are updated. Cool. That will be very good. Uh, I'm going to do that one out. Hey, 106 billion, not bad. RFK, you know, he's passed civil rights. He's talking about trying to get back our, you know, ports. He's also slashing, you know, the national debt. What could go wrong? Not passing healthcare or social security things. Go figure. <laughs> Garner support for the far right. I'm gonna work with the Republicans. A stellar MPP campaign. Huzzah. So yeah, in the next election. Ooh, you know what? In the 60 election. Ooh, hopefully we can get involved somewhere and we lose the war or don't do very well. Oh, the Women Act, yeah. So, who do we have? So, we need, do we just need a majority for this one, right? So, 7, so that's 10. 40, so that's 50. Actually, 12 of our party's far-right senator supports our bill for equality? For gender, or sexual, sexual. Gender equality? Hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. A transatlantic proposal. The English ambassador has reached out to us concerning the government's stated intention to expand diplomatic relations with OFM. Unlike the government's announcement, he has explicitly stated on behalf of the English Foreign Secretary that its government intends to join the OFN as soon as possible in order to secure the protection of the U.S. against Germany and her neighbors, and to secure mutually beneficial trade between England and her former Commonwealth countries. The ambassador went on in a rather flattering tones about the special relationship between the U.S. and England that existed before the war and continued for some time about how rekindling the old alliance might help bring the light of democracy back to Europe. This is both a great opportunity and a potential trap. The collaborationist government, reformed as it may be, may not be fully divorced from Germany. Taking them in would be caving to a pseudo-fascist government for the sake of the strategic position without any guarantee of their loyalty or the support of the population. However, bases on the British Isle might be worth this risk, as it would give us enormous, enormous leverage over Germany could and could allow us to greatly expand our influence in Europe. Should England be allowed to proceed to the voting process to join the OFN as a full member? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, that, okay, that's an immediate vote. Holy crap. So, Bel Belize? I forgot Belize even existed. Um, why are you not part of the group down here? Organization Free Nations, Price, Social Democracy. Oh, yeah, social, like us. Uh, I, I didn't realize you were not part of the West Indies Federation, but okay. They said yes. Guyana votes yes. New Zealand votes yes. Australia. Does anyone say no? <laughs> Wait, can I say no? Oh, yeah, I'm going to say admit. Oh, okay, then. They, see, this is why I wasn't really concerned about getting them into the pack, because I knew something like this would happen on eventually, so. Go ahead. No room for compromise, no room for compromise. So yeah, that is 52, so that should be okay to do. I'm what, admit to the open? Cool, look at that. They just left the Unity Pact. Great. Run a respectable campaign. And another solo by Thatcher. Yep. The lower class needs our help. Cool. Can we expand business size to the class two Senate elections? Uh, we read this before, so if you want to read about this, go right ahead. But here we go. Oh, let's see, viewer results. <clears throat> oh, we actually lost some seats in the Great Lakes. Oh boy. So, let's see, the upcoming race. The parties have seen the following changes. And, oh my goodness. The Republican Party minus seven. The Democrat Party minus four, the center got seven, and the far right got four. Okay. It's like, basically, the the far left doesn't even exist, and Yaki's don't even exist yet, either. Okay, whatever. I'm going to choose this one just because I don't like seeing it done. I like to get all my industry stuff done as fast as possible. Normally so. And I'm, we definitely don't have to do that one, but it, it is what it is. <gasps> do we have tanks? Oh, we actually have tanks. Oh god, we have two different types of tanks divisions. Oh god, no. There you go. Pretty good. Wow. Campaign where we haven't. Cool. Wow, look at that. This looks this looks disgusting. Oh, look at that. That's so bad. So now we have 11 Republicans, 23 Democrats, 
47 center NPP members, 17 for far right NPP. That's, an, that's just nuts. So we have a total of 64-ish. Yeah, 64 senators for the NPP. That's nuts. After securing his passage to the Senate through a bipartisan coalition, President Kennedy signed the Women's Occupational Military Equality Normalization Act to resounding applause. The act bars the armed forces from discriminating against potential recruits on the basis of sex. This grants women the legal right to serve in all military occupations, including combat roles. Upon signing the act, Kennedy remarked, For far too long, not every individual has had an equal opportunity to serve the country on the battlefield. The struggle for liberty affects all peoples of the world, regardless of their sex. It is, an, it is a profound injustice to deny half of our people the right to take up arms to fight for the free world. By signing this act, I affirm that we must recognize the full human equality of all our people before God, before the law, and the councils of the government. We must do this not because it is militarily advantageous, although it is, not because of the laws of God commanded, although they do, nor even because many wish it to so. We must do it for the single and fundamental reason that it is the right thing to do. Cheers for fighting girls. We can, so people can shoot our girls. Hey man, that's what RFK wanted. Fine with me, whatever. Let's have a good time. And fun the Skunk Works. During the last war, the Skunk Works project was a nickname of the Lockheed Martin's P-80 fighter development program due to the foul smell of the workshop. Since then, the Skunk Works has become to refer to as any secret or semi-secret project developed by the private company that is unbound by the normal organizational and budgetary restrictions of the company. If we create a special grant for the businesses who organize Skunk Works, we can encourage more cooperations, corporations to do uh, secret projects for us and create a more decentralized military research model that will be harder for the Japanese spies or German ones for that matter to investigate steel or sabotage. Ooh, focus on military research, yes please. So we're down here. Engineering wise, we don't really have much to do. We could do mechanical range keeper, but meh. Anything here? Not really. Because this is the last one. And we can down here, but it's quite a bit of time. We're actually doing really, really well with the research. Of course, we are America, so it only makes sense that we should do really, really well with the research. Let's get some logistics three, because we can. Awesome. How are supplies? We are actually still out of tanks and anti-air. But anti-air is looking pretty good, so I'm not really worried about that. Gun-wise, we got... Not that much, actually. Not that much. Tactical bombers, I don't be... I don't... I don't want to see that. Uh, how, how about this? Yeah, campaign where we haven't... Campaign for civil rights. No, we're good. We're good. And we're doing actually really well with RK. It's so disappointing that I decided early on that I wanted to go down with a certain dude. Uh, that's okay, though. Because once... Because eventually TNO is going to get more and more updates. Hopefully there'll be more content for America. Especially as you push push further and further into the 1970s. So. Someday I want to get Goldwater elected. I want to get a second term for RFK of course. I want to get uh, a certain Buckeye elected in this campaign. Get Strom Thurmond. Strom, or how do you say his name? Elected. I really wish you could keep Nixon though. I really wish you could. I hope, hopefully you can but I don't know. The results are in. If you want to read this, go right ahead. Great. And the polls are, of course, updated as well. But we kind of already know what's probably going to happen. Yeah, same thing here. This looks so disgusting. <laughs> Texas is still... Hey, look at that. One of the senators, a Republican Democrat senator, look at that. George H.W. Bush. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Mm, kind of scary. We're ready for battle, though. We've done everything we can to prepare the nation for the Japanese hordes. Our factories are roaring the production, spitting out an endless stream of supplies. Millions of men and tons and thousands of women fill the ranks. The doctors are working overtime to produce warships, and our storage tanks are filled with the millions of gallons of fuel. The establishment press may whine, and you may see the odd student protest, but the more important thing is that our nation has been forged into a steel fist with which to smash the Kropos spirit sphere. The emperor must be shaking in his kimono in the capital of his, of his evil, evil empire. Let us immediately review our plans to take back what is rightfully ours and where to go from there. Thank you, political power. Nice. We got a lot of social democracy here. 56%. Okay. A day for tears. It is with a heavy heart that I announced that today at 5.36 or 5.35, 9.35 a.m. today, Walt Disney has died of lung cancer at St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank, California. He was 65 years old. Wow. He survived by his wife, Lillian, his two daughters, Sharon and Diane, and a multi-million dollar empire of hope and joy. Never before has a man ingrained himself and his works into America's long memory more than Disney. Through the characters he created, Mickey Mouse, Peter Pan, Cinderella, he has touched the hearts of millions of the world over, of all walks and ages. Fill the films he produced through them, of which there are now over 80 in county. He has introduced America and beyond to limitless worlds of fantasy and magic, made us believe for a few short hours that these worlds were real. Through the parks he designed, he has blessed us with glimpses of a future where all men can see their dreams fulfilled, their inner ch child let loose without care. The world is made brighter with his birth, and now made dimmer with his passing. CBS holds a moment of silence to pay homage, followed shortly after by a montage 
mont montage of Walt Disney's finest works and orchestral arrangement of his popular Mickey Mouse Club march. May his legacy bring happiness for generations to come, and may the man himself rest in peace knowing that he has made many, many dreams come true. Let us pray or pay laughter for every tear shed. Oh, that's so sad. So sad. Yeah, we're even going to help out Mo Moxico. Oh, that doesn't say Mexico. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's keep making America very, very industrial here. Very, very, very much emphasis on the industry. Hey, maintenance three is done. Great. That's weird. It wants to do field hospital three. And we have no army XP. All volunteer forces. Nope. Even though we're preparing the war for the war, the country for more and more war. No. So we have. Oh, we don't even have maintenance copies. I should have thrown. Oh, we should have thrown recon. Oh, you know what I should do? Transport helicopters are nice. I think we talked about this earlier too. Do we get any recon from this? No, we don't. Yeah. XP loss is minus 15. But field hospitals, minus 20. Trickle back 30%. And this is only 20%, so... Eh. That's all you get. You get more HP. And this one gives you more breakthrough, more soft attack, hard attack, field capacity, which is not bad for helicopter divisions. And defense. Hey, the dam's already done. Great, congratulations. Now, scout helicopters. I've got to get that one. Look at that. You lose a little bit of recovery rate. You take more supply, less organization, piercing reliability, and get more weight and fuel usage. But you get th more defense. 25 more breakthrough. 21 more soft attack, more hard attack, more recon, more fuel capacity. That is so good. Oh my goodness, I want to get that one so badly. But let's go do fire up the people. No amount of manpower is going to win a war if the people are not in support of the conflict. And the knowledge that our cause is righteous and in the service of liberty for all mankind. While our brave men stand firm as the tides of the hordes of tyranny lap against a bulwark. Knowing the importance of our struggle, we should focus on efforts on launching an extensive pro-information campaign to fire up the people. <clears throat> only a million sparks light over only a million sparks light the torch of liberty. And we will light those sparks in countless homes across the nation. Let us call the nation's foremost uh, PR experts to DC to design our campaign. So for two years we get more population and fire up the people. Fire, fire up the people. Cool. C e Southern Fear, CIA Operations, Himmler. Yeah, we don't need to do that since we got those. Oh, wow. Rally the extremists. Rush militarization. Focus on air equipment. I mean, it's not bad. I, mean, I don't really want to spend political power on this, though. Research on the air. Uh, the civilian factory. We could do this, but honestly, the thing that I think we're limited most by is our industrial capacity. Rally the center. We want more unified. Unified. Ah, uh, you know, I'm kind of good. Russian militarization. Nah, this stuff is okay. So my goal is hopefully that the Navy will do okay. Oh, look at all these extra ships. Oh man, we're only producing screens. Oh goodness gracious. Give me half, you guys. Let's do this again. Back. Select. Half. There you go. So, you... That looks pretty weak over here. So, we'll throw you right there. And we'll throw you right there, too. Cool. And actually, since we're here, we're going to train these guys, too. Because it looks like some of these guys are still brand new. So, go ahead and do that. Let everyone train if they need to. Fire up the people. Because hopefully with this navy... I'm sure the Japanese have a, a tremendously huge navy. But as long as we can concentrate our forces in, like, the coast off America... We can and hopefully destroy a large chunk of the Japanese fleet through destroying convoys as well. That's my main goal. We don't need a massive army. We just need to destroy the entire navy for the most part for the, from the Japanese. But community action. Well, it may include many of ours and even conservatives in our ranks, the MPP stands at its core a progressive center-left party. In recent weeks, our more radical left-wing elements have begun expressing reservations about our media campaign and how its messaging is disturbingly bourgeois. To reassure them, we have set up a campaign reaffirming our commitment to local communities and public access facilities through donations to its public community centers, churches, local businesses, even the more moderate civil rights organizations that we subtly encourage these places to put up some nice patriotic recruitment posters is just a happy bonus. Awesome. Fire of the people. Any playwright knows that the words alone will not rouse an audience. The timing of an unbidden sob, the body language of a soliloquy, the tone of an offhand phrase, it is of this precise direction that elicits the emotional response swelling until the carthatic release. Uh, the voices of the elderly farmers of Hawaii hardened as they recount the Japanese eviction, making them foreigners in their own homes. These proud men were laid low by injustice and America's rage smoldered on their behalf. The mother of four, whose sons were obliterated in an instant by a Japanese battleship, stifled as stifled a sob as she remembered, bearing four caskets in a single day. She did not need to say more for America wept for her. 
The veteran who remaining hand shook as you described the metallic taste coating his mouth when a dead soldier detonated into a meaty mist, vaporizing a sergeant with shrapnel cleaving through his arms. America recoiled at Japanese barbarism, the acts of a race of beasts playing at being human. Such indignities, such sorrow, such horror. This was the legacy of the last war recalled in every waking moment by the occupation of Hawaii and the treaty ports. America endured this, endured, but this, this was not life. The crowd roared and wailed, shaking their fists as the rally reached its emotional zenith, with the MPP congressman leading his constituents in a harrowing cry, America will be whole again. Oh boy. Oh boy. So let's go ahead and choose one of these. Um, let's go with this one, but we're going to also ease Southern Fears at the exact same time, just so things get a little bit more balanced out, just in case, just in case. Wow, that's a lot of money. And I've accomplished my goal, we're under 100 billion in terms of national debt. And we're getting close to 500 billion in terms of GDP. Not bad. Here's what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five, some. Not bad. And this is how, this way we're going to build up our allies too. Too bad we don't puppet Australia or New Zealand. I could actually build stuff there. Yeah, I, I never understood why. Like, why can't in Hoi 4, uh, why can't we just build up, like, the infrastructure of other nations? Like, why can't we, like, help them out? Because I kind of would want to, you know? I want to make sure that our allies have enough infrastructure or forts or stuff like that, you know, as a gift, kind of as, as a gift, maybe, for other people, you know. And actually now, a little bit of lag from auto saving and processing. Wow, 56% so. Hey, primary schooling, it's going up. That's great. Poverty rate, it's slowly going up. I love it. Uh, industrial expertise is slowly going up, as well as army professionalism. Great, great, great. And which will do fight for America. The war led to many changes in American society, but one of them was the changes in the depiction of the Japanese in cartoons and posters. Over the course of the war, the Japanese were increasingly portrayed according to the classic Asian stereotypes, short, bucktooth, and with bad eyesight. However, as the war started going badly for us, and especially after Akagi, the Japanese took on another form of an artistic zeitgeist. Uniform, brutal hordes, blood-crazed rapists and slavers who represent all the worst things about tyranny, the Yellow Peril. Some in our party may balk at the racist connotations of the portrayals, but if employed them strategically and subtly, and contrasted with the good agents that we fought to rescue. This can help us give our commercials, our posters, and films the edge to really portray our fight, not only as one against the illegal and unjust Akagi Accords, but against the vilest of tyrannies yet to dawn over Asia and the Pacific. The Japanese Americans may be upset at the government <laughs> endorsing such betrayals, but can they really be trusted in the first place? A gentle reminder of the internment, internment camps should calm their loudest voices. Cool. So we're going to help destabilize pacifism in the country. Oh, this again. This is, this is making me happy. Oh boy. I know, I know that this doesn't mean too much at all. In terms of lowering debt for right now at the time of this recording, but God, I love it. Yeah, keep building up Angola, of all places. See, we're still building up African nations. We still love our allies in Africa. We still love them. We still help them out as best we can. And we might as well do military police. Since we're filling out all the ranks here for uh, support companies, we might as well, right? Variable attack patterns, great. Let's go ahead and do joint air op operations. This is one of the rare campaigns where I actually finish my air doctrine. Cool. Uh, honestly, we're at 100%, so we don't need to see that. Thank you. Black market. Eh, we're kind of okay. Ooh, the just 6 is done as well. Great. Let's go ahead and grab, grab, grab. We're done there. Armor. Uh, let's grab some more armor for these guys. Advanced armor skirts. That'd be good. Since we are emphasizing armor quite a bit. Uh, what do we else do we have here? Eh, I don't really care about that. Diplomatic arena. Yeah. Oh, community outreach initiatives. Military factory construction speed 10% for about a month. You can produce equipment faster. Infrastructure, that's not bad, but... Eh, I don't want to say political power. East of the fears. I might go ahead and do this, though. Just for more industrial expertise, we'll do this one as well as East of the fears at the same time again, like we did with the other stuff. Political landscape. It would really suck to be in the Republican Party right now. I can't believe we got 47 senators just for the center NPP. That's so cool. That's fight for workers and as well as East Southern Fears. Cool, the Dragon Lady, but let's do this one first. Aggressive recruitment methods, good. Our decision to not go all in on the draft right away has caused a shortage of volunteer personnel. Uh, despite the fit 
efficacy of our recruitment campaigns. Well, if the mountain won't come to Muhammad, let's send our recruiters into the high schools and colleges to snag them early. We can also make it easier to attain citizenship through military service to attract the immigrants and offer non felon criminals a chance to add a commuted sentence in return for service. Let Uncle Sam squeeze this lemon for juice, even if it is sour. The Dragon Lady. Today is our lucky day, Mr. President. We have some technology that will change the Cold War. RFK has been t tapping his foot under the desk for five minutes now, waiting for the Lockheed representative to make his important announcement. Just what could you possibly have now, Mr. Johnson? I haven't been impressed with your company in a while. We've been working on engineering this new type of spy plane, one that will expose the Germans and Japanese for who they really are. The representative says, a hint of suspenseful destruction filming his otherwise quiet voice. He steps aside to reveal a blueprint for the new revolutionary aircraft. The long, slender vehicle failed to make a good first impression on the president, who at once believed the aircraft was too light. He would need more information and fast. The representative continued, this baby is a new and improved U-2, complete with better cameras for better recon. It's also faster than some of our, more, of our most recent planes, so it can go anywhere and back in no time. Not only that, Mr. President, <clears throat> but it's bigger and stronger, and when it can't maneuver, it can take a hit. Now the president was intrigued. What if, or if what he says about the plane is true, the U.S. would certainly dominate the Cold War. Air reconnaissance like that would be very useful in diplomatic situations, situations that the U.S. could outright win. All right, Mr. Johnson, I think we should take your plane on a test drive to make sure that it really is what you say it is. I'm thinking we should send this plane over to Germany. Even though we're really focusing on the Japanese right now. Don't get me wrong, we're focusing really, really hard on the Japanese. And I've neglected my intelligence agency, which is good that we already have it established, but... We have nothing here. Let's go ahead and get some passive defense. Since we are running out of things to do for our civilian factories, we might as well, right? And then you know what? Let's go do that. I don't think I can build up anywhere else since I don't own the land directly. Actually, we can help out Madagascar. You might as well do the central Madagascar. Do Angola as well if we can. Uh, radar. I can't believe I, can't, I haven't done radar yet. We'll do it down here in Puerto Rico. Uh, Guantanamo Bay because we can't. Up there. Just for funsies. Oh yeah, Bermuda definitely. Uh, up there. On all corners of where America exists, we must have information, especially Alaska too. So we corners, 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 that should be good. I don't think we own it. Oh, look at that. England's got some radar too. Okay, they're at war. Actually, can I send them some supplies? Obviously, they don't need, they don't really need supplies for taking out whales, but... I just want to get involved, man. Oh, look at that. No intel on this combat, huh? Certified gold. The stage is tiny, sparse, and just a white and red square surrounded on by all sides by the audience. They're all Burbank locals, brought in by a frantic radio announcement that earlier that day. Parker may have effed up with the tickets, but they're still there, young men and women with smiles on their faces, eager to see the man in the center of it all. Eisen had been terrible. He didn't mind all the GIs and Rezjevic locals who clamored for autographs. That was just fine by him, but it was so far from everyone. So far from Mama, especially which hurt more than anything else put together. When her liver gave out, it broke him. He practically had to bash the desk sergeant's head and to give him leave, and during the funeral, friends and family had to hold him up to keep him from collapsing in heartbreak. And then the movies, each kitschier than the last, and each one more of a dud. Here, though, on stage, guitar in his hand, sweat dripped onto his leather jackets, basking in the applause and cheers of the crowd. He's happy. He's an icon, an electric conduit, a lovable mama's boa, a blight on the nation, sex incarnate, an infinite number of things. Elvis Presley is back. The image is one thing and the human being is another. Oh my goodness, certify gold. Cool. At this point, I think we gotta save some political power. Ooh, what did we just get there? Five for schools. Oh, can we do that again? Oh man, if we can do that again, yeah. So. Cool. It is 67, so that's good. We're done with this. Let's get some more skirts. That's a little bit ahead of time. Let's get some more uh, ballistic computers. Mechanical ballistic computers, I should add. Minus 22 billion, good. We're gonna set ourselves up for a very good, bright future. Until we run out of fuel. Which we hopefully won't. And of course... I think everyone could pretty much figure out that England was probably going to win. Nice. Cool. Let's crank up the draft. Simply put, the, the mere reinstitution of the draft policies used in our relatively brief involvement in the previous two world wars does not guarantee us sufficient manpower for a truly prolonged conflict of this type seen in South Africa. They say nothing of the potential mass casualties in a limited nuclear war. We need to dust off proposals of the Joseph Kennedy administration regarding mass conscription and expansion of the draftable age groups, then adapt these policies for the modern age. This really won't be popular, and more worryingly, it will be increasingly age groups that will cons constitute reliable voting blocks. But if we want America to survive, we must be willing to take all the steps necessary to guarantee the survival of its military, even though... The most brutal of meat grinders, even through it. Oh my goodness, that's not good. So who do we have? Five and forty-two. All seventeen of our party's right, far right side senators will support the bill. Uh, let's go do that first. Uh, pass more passive defense because we can. So we have seventeen plus five is twenty-two. Twenty-two plus forty-two is usually sixty-four. So social equality and conscription. Seventeen. That, yeah, why not? No. 
The senator, Republican senator supports our bill. There seems to be no room for... Is there only one Republican senator? I thought there was 11. Okay. Republican technocrats hand-wringing about its effect on our research base, and Democrats afraid of losing their honor students overseas. Oh, we have honor students overseas, huh? I want to fight for schools again. Really want to improve the academic base. So, I'm not bad. We're actually doing really well. Look at that population, though. Ooh. Ooh. The, oh, come on. The U-2 mission fails. Let's get some more civilian factories. Well, Mr. President, the U-2 mission did not go like as we hoped. The spy plane was shot down by German SAMs and crashed 20 miles northwest of Dortmund. Even worse, our pilot is now in German captivity. No doubt the secret police is giving him a hard time. Thankfully, the photos our man took of Germany made it into our hands before he met his current fate. Though we lost pilot powers, we've done some aerial shots of the German lands. Photos we can use if the diplomatic situation, situation grows intense. <clears throat> We can. We are certain that the Germans are going to want those photos, and we want a pilot back. So we can try to negotiate with the superpower. We both have valuable assets, so I recommend we try diplomacy and get the Germans to give us what we want. Maybe we can strike a deal with them. The auto the deal. Yeah, I still want to save a little bit more political power. Here, what we do maybe lower construction spending by one more, but increase civilian spending just because I want more political power. So there we go. It's about the same, and actually with that we get up to 0.87. So we have one, two, three, four, four-ish. So that's okay. Germany requests the photos. Talks between our diplomat and the German counterparts came up empty yesterday. Germany has made it clear that they will not even consider letting our pilot go unless we give them the reconnaissance photos. Not only that, they also want us to issue a formal apology for our spy attempt. This is utterly ridiculous for some of our members of government to comprehend it. It is very possible that right now, the Germans are tearing apart our new plane and torturing this pilot, abusing what they have now... What, ugh, abusing what they have now for their own selfish gain. This abuse has gone on long enough. We can either continue pressuring the Germans into giving what we want, our pilot, or we can submit it to their offer and hand over the photos. If we saw these talks even more, it will certainly mean our more pain our man must endure. However, the photos we have are crucial from a strategic standpoint. Uh, let's see. Further divided? No, 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 no. no. We're gonna, we're gonna escalate this. They, they, there's no way they can beat our navy. There's no way. U.S. versus Germany with the OFN together. Off the coast of the Aleutians. Oh boy. Off the Alaskan catch, a shrimp trawler a few days out from Unalaska, Captain Jeffrey Norbert squinted into the fog surrounding his boat, trying and failing to see any more than a few ships lengths away. He sipped his steaming mug of coffee. His crew would be pulling up the nets. All he had to do was keep watch and make sure that they didn't run any, into any ghost ships. Hey, Cap, the nets are all pulled up. We're ready to go. A crewman poked his head into the bridge, telling Norbert that they're ready to set off. Norbert shook his head. Now, when visibility is like this, we'll wait a few more hours to see if things clear up. There's nobody else around here, Captain. We're the only American boat for miles, and come on, what are the chances that the Japanese are going to poke around so far from home? Norbert shrugged his crewman, or shushed the crewman, then peered through his binoculars, a dark shadow rising out of the fog, morphed into the shape of a fishing trawler. Through his binoculars, he can make out a Japanese flag, and the man and the obsidian bridge staring back at him. Get on a horn, tell the Japanese to clear out. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Liberty for all and all for liberty. Protests have erupted in the universities across the nation after President Kennedy signed the Social Equity and Conscription Act this morning. The S-E-C-A. S-K. This morning, the students are furious that the act had abolished educational deferments and fear of being called up to fight in yet another unpopular foreign war. The National Guard has been deployed at many campuses to contain the protests. Upon signing the bill, Kennedy remarked, I do emphasize or empathize with the students voting their dissent against their new legislation. I understand the fears of being dragged into a no-win war overseas. However, our military outlook involves tangible and realistic goals. Moreover, it is oriented towards the abolition of fascist oppression and the liberation of peoples across the world. Our students can rest assured that the next conflict, should one arise, will be righteous and aims and chivalrous and method. Moreover, it will be a conflict where those of means will no longer be able to use their wealth to shirk their duties, and Americans from all walks of life will do their part for the cause of freedom. No more fortunate sons. Educational draft the deferment becomes with no draft exemptions. Ooh, academic monthly base change goes down. Ooh, that's not good. So the trial for powers. Our best diplomats recently attempted to pressure the Germans into surrendering powers, but once again, they, they refused to send them over. Not only that, the Germans are now threatening to try pilots for espionage in a military court. All of a sudden, this is a very bad situation for diplomats to be in. If the crisis doesn't end soon, we'll likely see the Germans execute one of our men. However, they also let us know that if we send over the photos and issue our big apology, our pilot will be returned without injury. We know for sure that if our powers is destroyed, he will receive many, many bullets to the head. We need to tread carefully or cautiously from now on. What we don't know is whether or not the Germans will actually carry out the trial. Tensions between the countries are already high. And the Germans must be aware of this as well. It could be that they are issuing an empty threat. On the other hand, we could hand over the photos and completely eliminate the possibility of a military trial for a pilot. How shall we proceed? Call their bluff. Give up the photos before someone gets hurt. Oh, man. Go slightly further divided. Actually, that wouldn't be bad. Give up the photos before someone gets hurt. That's not bad for the way we want to go, actually. Oh, man. Hmm. How, how are we right now in America? 
Someone united no effects. You know what? Give up the photos. We're gonna do that so we become more divided. There you go. Is disunited and benefit presidential challengers and boost extremists. That's what we want. Um, I normally I would choose the other option because I will call their bluff. Like we will go to war if I have to. And we'll go kaboom with nukes, but whatever. Ready for war, though. After months of intensive campaigning and pulling the strings of industry, we are ready as for war as any nation has been since World War One. The populace has been whipped up into a frenzy, and war support is at all-time high. Long airlines, long lines stretching outside the recruitment offices of young men ready to slap the jab. Okay. <laughs> Many of the higher echelons of the party are worried that without mass mobilization of industry and draftees, we will lack the strength to fight a sustained war should the Pacific and Asian conflicts to come to evolve into a full glo on global or continental war, but for more limited conflicts, we are as ready as can be. With the party, the economy, and the people united behind us. We just need to set the ball rolling, and with some luck, the Japanese will be running back to their home island before it loses its momentum. Cool. I really don't like doing that. Like, giving in. The Japanese rammed their ship. Captain Norbert and his crew had been halting the, healing the Japanese vessel for minutes, but to no avail. They had even heard a Morse code message back in signal lights, in case the radio equipment was malfunctioning. The Japanese ship's engines coughed to life, and the ship began to slide forward. It turned towards the asking catch. The engine roared, and the Japanese ship began to pick up speed without changing course. Get the engines going, Norbert screamed at his crew. The Alaskan catch's engines hummed, and the Japanese and the ship began to glide toward in the water, too slow to dodge the Japanese ship if it stayed on course. The Japanese ship drew closer and closer until, at the last moment, it swerved, avoiding a head-on collision. But with the entire length of the ship slammed against the Alaskan catch, Norbert and his crew were thrown into the deck as the Alaskan catch reeled. Captain, what are your orders? Get us out of here. Hit them back straight on. Uh, the same, oh, we can actually see their ship. Um, you know what? We back down against the Germans because my because I want to get back. Hawaii, get us out of here. Uh, we're not going to tell the Japanese what they can do. Hit them back straight on. We're going to go straight at them. If this escalates into nuclear war, so be it. Let's have a good time with them. Let's go ahead and do modernize the department. The sinking of the Abu Maru. Cool. What do you mean the Coast Guard picked up the Japanese fishermen in American waters? And why is this coming to me, the head of the Jap of the Jap Japan desk at the S Department of State's Bureau of East Asian and P Pacific Affairs gave his supported a quizzical look? With most of the Jap Pacific in Japan's hands, there are few reasons why a Japanese fishing ship would enter the American waters, and if they had, why was the state getting involved in a simple deportation issue? A concerned citizen rammed his fishing boat into a Japanese boat near Alaska, sinking it. They brought the survivors back to the Coast Guard, his subordinate replied sheepishly. Well, crud, even if the Japanese were in American waters, having an American boat ram a Japanese one and sink it was going to cause some problems. I'm guessing the Japanese government's got something to say. Well, they attacked us first. They're asking for an official apology and to turn over the American crew for a trial in Tokyo over any deaths in the Japanese crew. The veteran diplomats' features tighten. We're sure as hell not handing over any Americans for anything that happened in our waters. The subordinate nodded and looked uneasy. Any dad Japanese are still on our citizens' hands, sir. We should look way to de escalate. Get the dictionary, we'll need some clever words. The boys will be disappointed. The letter of the two sorrows. Till the Japanese take a height, they were trespassing. Um, mm, the voters will be disappointed. God dang it, we needed to do that one. I want to get back to Hawaii, and I want to make sure things go well, but let's do that one. We'll need some clever words. Uh, crud. God, if this was a real, like, America, just like America, like, America, America, America campaign. Oh, wait, I actually deport the crew. Yeah, as things should be, but... Mm, God, if I was really playing RFK for real, and I didn't care about, like... What was going to happen? Like I would go full on in. Actually, you know, then again, the, uh, when I play as America again, probably between sixty four and sixty eight, I will have probably have someone else selected, just to keep it a little different. So, look, Japan, you can't come into my waters. You can't. Oh well, tough nuts. Ready for war? I mean, we're, we are getting ready for, war, and that's why I'm training all these ships, just so that we are good to go. Uh, maybe we should make some capital ships, maybe you know, uh, Kitty Hawk class. I mean, yeah, I could upgrade these ships, I suppose, but... Hangar bases... Oh, yeah, maybe I should have upgraded these a long time ago. Whoops. Actually, medium... We want large, right? We want large. We want to get large, large, large. Got some deck armor. That's what we want. Good. Large. We like them large. If they're not large, what, do we even really want them? Anti-air. Anti-air 4, of course. Radar 3 is great. Uh, nuclear... Ooh. Actually, that slows us down, so no... We're good. Carrier engine three is good, and go for this. Good. good. Let's make some more carriers. Oh wait, we're still trying to make this stuff, aren't we? Improve carrier holes. Cool. Cool. Ready for war. Uh, let's do one more. 
and then we'll read this event, and we'll call it an episode. Eyes on the ports. If we're ever to eliminate the shameful stain on American sovereignty caused by the RDs, the so-called treaty ports, we will need to decipher the Japanese codes. While well, we have a good view overview of the layout of the ports and the garrisons due to them being in the middle of our cities, the Japanese will surely try to reinforce them with Ameri the Navy and Army elements once they figure out what we are planning. At that point, it will be crucial for the, that our Navy elements can position themselves to intercept any Japanese aid force and dissuade them from trying to stage release landings or shelling the cities. Let us put our powerful computers to work creating their ciphers, or cracking their ciphers. It surely won't take too long. How good could Japanese produce electronics be anyways? I don't know, pretty good, probably. <clears throat> but we're ready for war. Football fields and factories, space, filled with assembly lines. Gargantuan warehouses, filled to the brim with parts and chassis. A deafening clamor of steam and machinery, drowning out the workers' hubbub. A mountain of steel, rivets, and plastic entered at one end of the Lima Army tank plant, and from the other end emerged the armored beats of an army reborn. The commanding general of the Army Material Command, flanked by the factory executives, worked mightily to hide his all. He was no stranger to the staggering scale of war, fighting on the British Isles as a major. He watched waves of American soldiers fling themselves against the Germans like so many leaves in the storm. He never thought that he would see anything like it again, but now witness an American arming itself for another grand crusade, its industrial heart rousing itself from decades of topor. It was an ambitious contract, but you've got it all in hand, the general said. You've got... You're not the first to be impressed, the chief executive of the plant replied, keeping up with the general's brisk pace. We can produce one tank every six or eight hours, and we're working on bringing that down to six, maybe five. The general ran the numbers, numbers in his head. One tank per workday, maybe two or three at full capacity and triple shifts, so two to six hundred tanks a year. A rare smile crest crease his face. Remarkable. We will bury them. Cool. But that's going to end today's episode, my friends. Uh, we have definitely put ourselves in a weird position with Germany as well as Japan. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And tomorrow will most likely begin the next election season. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.